SNAP delays are leaving seniors, children, and families hungry all over the United States. If you rely on food stamps to feed yourself or your family, you need to know about this. You used to be able to rely on your SNAP benefits coming in like clockwork. As long as you submitted your recertifications on time and kept your information updated, you didn't really have to worry about your benefits not showing up. When I was getting food stamps 15 years ago, we never experienced delays. But times have certainly changed. Marketplace reports that more than a dozen states are experiencing severe SNAP delays. Thousands of people are waiting 60 days or more to get their benefits, and some are waiting up to 150 days. That's almost five months without food benefits. These delays are impacting everything. Recertifications, new applications, stolen benefit replacements, and more. Even if you do everything perfectly right, you could still end up going without your benefits for a long period of time. Take Joanna Jackson from Georgia, for example. She relies on SNAP to feed her three teenage daughters. She's been navigating the system for a while now, and she knows that she has to recertify multiple times a year. She got all of her paperwork done before the deadline in July, but her benefits stopped in August anyway. And when the money didn't show up, she couldn't reach anyone in the office to figure out what was going on. She called and called, but couldn't get an answer. She left voicemails, but nobody ever called back. She sent a letter, no response, no answers, no help, just silence. No benefits showed up in August or September. And after months of trying to get information and not getting anywhere, Joanna finally contacted her senators and her representative in October. Within two weeks, she got a response and had a pending balance in her account. The money finally showed up at the end of October, three months after she submitted her paperwork on time. In Georgia, about 25% of new SNAP applications and about 66% of recertification approvals are delayed. Even if you qualify, it can take more than a month for the paperwork to be processed. And that means if you've been getting benefits and you're due for a renewal, you will more than likely miss some benefits before that paperwork gets processed. But this isn't just a Georgia problem. Kathleen Kelleher, an attorney with the Legal Aid Society, said that delays are off the charts horrible in New York City. Only 40% of applications are processed on time there. In New York, it's not uncommon for people to spend hours on hold trying to get a hold of someone and never getting connected. In Missouri, a mom named Treasure McDowell has called the social services department three times a day for a month and still hasn't spoken to a human being. Sometimes the call is automatically disconnected because the hotline reaches capacity. That state has actually been sued over their call center because it is so dysfunctional. So if your benefits get delayed, what can you do? The best answer to get an immediate response is to reach out to your elected officials like Joanna did. You can contact them by going to congress.gov and entering your address into the box under contact your member. This will pull up the information on your senators and your representatives so that you can call, email, or send a letter using that information provided. Now, to prevent this from happening at all, you can apply for ESAP if you're a senior or a person with a disability. ESAP stands for Elderly Simplified Application Project, and it's available in many states for people who have fixed incomes. One of the benefits of ESAP is that you don't have to recertify so often. Instead of submitting paperwork every six months or so, you only have to file paperwork once every two to three years instead. This reduces interruptions and delays for for you, and it also helps others by easing the paperwork load at the office. For more information on that, visit lowincomerelief.com slash ESAP. Meanwhile, SNAP fraud has also been on the rise, and scammers are getting more and more creative all the time. If you're not being honest on your food stamps application, it can cost you. Lying on your application is fraud, and it is illegal. This is very serious, and you cannot do this. Caitlin Rigdom from Missouri learned this lesson the hard way. She chose not to list her husband as a household member so that she didn't have to count his income on her application. And as a result, she received $42,840 in SNAP benefits since 2017, and that's money she's not eligible for. She is now facing two felony charges and is due in court again in December. In Connecticut, four different people have been charged with first-degree larceny after stealing almost $20,000 from state assistance programs. Programs. The four cases were not related. Each individual stole between $2,600 and $7,500 in SNAP benefits. 
These are serious crimes that will carry serious consequences for the people involved. The penalties for SNAP fraud can include fines, repayment of the overpaid benefits, disqualification from the program, and even jail time. The consequences can also limit your future opportunities for jobs, housing, and more. It is so important to always provide accurate and honest information on your SNAP applications. Please do not let this happen to you. Now, of course, there's a whole different kind of scam going on in Virginia. A well-meaning charity named The Least of These Ministry is converting the former Apple Valley Hotel into housing for the homeless. And this has apparently ticked off some residents because a fraudulent letter has started circulating around Roanoke County. The letter includes an official looking USDA letterhead and format, but it is not real. There are several red flags on this letter, and I'm only going to review a few with you. First, it claims that the changes to the hotel have resulted in the area being declared a food desert, which is obviously bogus because there's a Walmart right across the street. Second, the letter also claims that any homeowner who decides to take in homeless people can get a monthly check from the government, but that's another lie. Third, it claims that anyone in the area is going to have their property value reduced because of the hotel conversion, and that they should be able to get their property taxes reduced as well. And finally, anyone who actually calls the included phone number is directed to Santa's hotline, which has nothing to do with the USDA. The USDA has stated that this letter is a fake and should be immediately thrown away. The matter is being investigated and hopefully someone will figure out who sent this. Honestly, this infuriates me because someone went through a great deal of trouble to create this official looking scam letter. It's believed that the letter was intended to rile people up and stop the ministry from completing the hotel conversion. Anyway, let's move on to some good news. The USDA's new summer EBT program is set to launch next summer. This program will provide each child with an extra $40 for every month of the summer. That's about $120 a child. States, tribes, and territories are already doing the paperwork required to get on board with this new program, so it should roll out a little more smoothly than the PEBT process we've witnessed over the last few years. So far, the following areas have confirmed their plan to implement summer EBT in 2024. California, Cherokee Nation, Chickasaw Nation, Illinois, Kansas, Kentucky, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, New Jersey, Ohio, Utah, Virginia, and West Virginia. We've also found 12 new EBT discounts this month. The new additions include Children's Museum of Phoenix in Phoenix, Arizona, the Magnus Collection of Jewish Art and Life in Berkeley, California, Monterey History and Art at Staten Center in Monterey, California, Historic Odessa Foundation in Odessa, Delaware, Museum of Motherhood in St. Petersburg, Florida, Candles Holocaust Museum and Education Center in Terre Haute, Indiana, Sloan Museum of Discovery in Flint, Michigan, the Discovery Center of the Southern Tier in Binghamton, New York, Robeson Planetarium and Science Center in Lumberton, North Carolina, Japanese American Museum in Portland, Oregon, International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina, and my personal favorite, the Museum of Glass in Tacoma, Washington. All of these discounts have been added to our list of over one thousand EBT discounts nationwide at lowincomerelief.com slash EBT. In the course of my research today, I also found a really interesting statistic. Did you know that between 17 and 23 percent of all cashiers, cooks, health aides, and janitors in the United States are eligible for SNAP? That's what the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities says. Oh, and good news for a few states. Around 9,000 more people are eligible for SNAP in Connecticut after some changes to the rules. The income limits have been increased to 200 percent of the federal poverty level instead of 185 percent, which means that a family of four who earns $5,000 a month could be eligible for food stamps in Connecticut now. In Florida, Florida State University has announced that they can accept SNAP benefits at the Trading Post convenience store located inside the student union. Illinois received a few waivers due to the state's high unemployment rate. Usually there are time limits on how long an able-bodied adult without dependents can receive food assistance, but Illinois doesn't have to follow those rules until October 31st, 2020. Some work requirements do still apply, however. In Massachusetts, there are now 27 restaurants enrolled in the Restaurant Meals Program in this state. This program allows certain residents, including seniors, homeless people, and those with disabilities, to purchase hot restaurant meals with their food stamps benefits. Also, the Massachusetts State House is debating whether to revive a bill that would allow migrants who are in the country legally but are not citizens to receive food benefits. This bill used to be law, but it was repealed about 20 years ago. That's all I have for our EBT update this month. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and enable those notifications so that you don't miss our weekly resource roundups. I'll see you there.